Now, official residences of cabinet ministers in Cape Town and Pretoria have cost taxpayers 58 million rand in the provision of services since 2019. A breakdown of this figure was revealed by Public Works Minister Sihle Zikalala from a parliamentary question posed by the DA. Now, the DA has described this as an abuse of power by the ANC-led government, wasting money while millions of citizens live in poverty. Now, the breakdown of the costs include provisions of free water, electricity, and alternative power supply, as well as security upgrades. Now, let's chat more about this. I'm joined by DA MP Dr. Leon Schreiber. Thank you so much, um, Leon, for joining me this afternoon. Let's first take a look at this, you know, 58 million rand. It is a huge sum, um, but more particularly, 18.3 million rand was spent on providing free electricity to ministers and deputy ministers at 58 Cape Town mansions, and then 22 million in Pretoria for 39 mansions. Those two amounts, very large sums when it comes to providing electricity. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, this comes, of course, in the context of the load shedding crisis that South Africans are suffering un under every single day. Um, and when you take together those figures, uh, over 40 million rand just for water and electricity, and you add in the 7 million rand that was spent to actually procure things like generators and solar power and inverters and other things for these official residences, then the picture is very clear that the cabinet ministers and deputy ministers, who are of course responsible at the end of the day for causing the load shedding crisis, are actually using taxpayer money to escape the consequences of that crisis. And I think that that is something that most South Africans would find to be immoral, to say the least, but it also creates a very serious question around the seriousness of this government to actually solve load shedding when it doesn't actually experience what it is about on the ground. Mm. But many would also say that 58 million rand is just, you know, it's, it's not a big amount when it comes to saving, you know, as other people from the electricity crisis, South Africans from the electricity crisis. Um, but I do also want to ask you this question about the 387 million rand uh, per year for salaries of over 600 support staff. That's also a massive amount. Yes, so I think that the question you pose there is an important one. Uh, this is not an isolated set of abuses in our view. Uh, and remember that all of this comes and is made possible by something called the Ministerial Handbook, which is a document that, as far as we can tell, does actually not have any law that provides for this document to exist. So that is something that we have referred to the public protector. But if you look at it in totality, the amount that South Africans are actually spending on maintaining the lifestyles of ministers and deputy ministers is actually quite shocking and does amount to something very substantial. So you've mentioned there the 387 million for um, staff members. So uh, remember, there are about 30 ministers and 36 deputy ministers, and together they are employing more than 600 people uh, as staff members. That adds up to about 2 billion rand going back to the 2019 election. Then, of course, there are the houses, the properties themselves. We've recently established that those properties are worth about 1 billion rand in total. Then you add things like VIP security, which is going to take you over 500 million rand a year. And of course, things like salaries, pensions and other benefits. And that is exactly what the DA is busy doing. We are asking all of these questions and we are busy compiling all of this information because I'd like to give you a single figure eventually for how much the ministerial handbook is actually costing South Africans every year. But I already feel quite comfortable to say that we are looking at around 1.5 billion rand a year spent on maintaining the lifestyles of what we submit our rock star ministers and deputy ministers. That is a huge, very, very huge sum if we are looking at it um, from that perspective. Uh, Leon, um, I do, however, want to ask you, last year, uh, President Ramaphosa, he did cut some perks. Um, and I think he did approve those guidelines for members of the executive on April 13, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. Um, and that was also according to a letter written by Acting Public Service and Administration Minister then uh, Tulas Nlesi. Um, do you think that might help a bit when it comes to reducing the costs and the amount of money that's being used? Well, the story from last year is actually um, a little bit the opposite, to be honest. What happened was that in April of last year, 
uh, President Ramaphosa made changes to the ministerial handbook mm. that were not even published. They were not made public. Um, and they included completely removing any cap on expenses for water and electricity and even expanding the number of support staff a minister could have from 11 to 15. And then in around September or October of last year, uh, the DA managed to find out about these changes. Uh, we exposed uh, this, these changes back then, and there was a huge public outcry that actually forced the president to backtrack. So he, he, he reversed those particular changes. But the problem, of course, is that the systemic issue with the ministerial handbook remains. It should not be possible for the president to secretly make changes, first of all, uh, to a document that is costing South Africans billions of rands every year. And second of all, it is not acceptable in a constitutional democracy that the president has dictatorial powers to make us pay for these things. Mm. Uh, the DA has therefore submitted a private member's bill, piece of legislation, uh, that would actually force the president to submit the ministerial handbook to parliament so that parliament can exercise proper oversight um, and ensure that South Africans are properly informed about how much it costs and that we can actually um, hold the president accountable and reduce ultimately the spending. That is the systemic solution that we need to a document that is really highly problematic and costing us billions of rands every year. Mm. And, and obviously recently there were also calls for the president to, to cut um, you know, deputy ministers and other support staff almost in half. Um, do you think that's something the president definitely needs to look at as well? Yes, the problem, of course, is that it is something that he should have been looking at for the five years that he's been in office now. And the president came into office promising us a reconfiguration of cabinet. He promised us to reduce the number of ministers and deputy ministers. Uh, but what happened most recently was that we actually saw an increase in the size of cabinet. Uh, we have uh, more ministers now, two more ministers, and I believe three more deputy ministers. So the president really is committing, uh, you know, what George Orwell called double speak here. He wants us to think that he is reducing the size of cabinet even as he is increasing it. And perhaps most disturbing of all here is uh, when the DA went back and we looked at the ministerial handbook that was in force under President Jacob Zuma, we found that the one that is currently enforced under President Ramaphosa is actually costing us more than Zuma's cabinet did. So that is, I think, a clear indication that the president has failed to live up to that promise. In fact, he is costing us more. We are paying more for his ministers and deputy ministers than we ever did, even for Jacob Zuma's. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much. Um, that was DAMP Dr. Leon Schreiber.